Everything starts in August of 1945, around the time of the Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombings. You see, the United States wanted to drop a third nuclear bomb. They even had the most important part to build that bomb, the plutonium core. But due to Japan surrendering after the two bombings, the plutonium core had no use. Or did it? U.S. officials decided to use it for research and experiments, and so it was sent to Los Alamos Laboratory in New Mexico. Little did they know that this three and a half inch sphere would cause two deadly incidents in a matter of one year. The first incident happened on August 21st, 1945. 24-year-old physicist Harry Doglian and 29-year-old private Robert J. Hemmerly were conducting an experiment on a plutonium ball using neutron reflectors. To understand what they were trying to achieve, we need to understand these three terms, subcriticality, criticality, and supercriticality. The first term describes the state of the core, where the rate of neutron loss to the environment is higher than the rate of neutrons created by fission. Criticality occurs when these two rates are equal, and supercriticality occurs when the rate of neutrons produced by fission is higher than the rate of lost neutrons, leading to a nuclear explosion. The goal of the experiment was to check how much neutron reflection is needed to cause supercriticality. They wanted to figure this out by bringing the core close to the critical point and, using advanced math and science, calculate the amount needed to cause supercriticality. But during this experiment, something went horribly wrong. A plutonium core was placed within a stack of neutron reflective bricks. Adding bricks would increase the amount of neutron reflection. But when Harry tried to stack another brick, he accidentally dropped it right onto the core, causing supercriticality. He quickly moved the brick, avoiding nuclear annihilation, but he received a deadly dose of radiation, around 200 rads in neutron radiation and 110 rads in gamma radiation. He died 25 days later due to acute radiation syndrome. The first incident was a tragic, unfortunate accident at work that caused the death of a young scientist. But the second one was just goofy and silly to say the least. So let's change the mood and get right to it. The second incident happened on May the 21st, 1946, and involved eight people in total, four physicists, one photographer, one student, and one guard. They were conducting the same experiment with the same goal as in the first incident, but instead of using bricks, they used two half spheres hollowed out so that the plutonium core could fit. The standard protocol was to use shims so that there would always be space for neutrons to escape, therefore avoiding supercriticality. But, as you can guess, the standard protocol was ignored and replaced by Slothin's protocol, in which he decided to use a flat tip screwdriver instead of shims. A fucking screwdriver held by his own hand. After he started doing that, he became a local expert, a hero, you might say. People were watching his tricks with a screwdriver and the ball of death like it was a movie in the cinema. Enrico Fermi told him in the audience that if they continued to use fucking screwdrivers, they'd be dead within a year from radiation. But nobody gave a fuck. Another thing that puzzles me is that everyone in the facility knew that if something went wrong during the tests, the whole facility would be straight up vaporized. His coworkers were jokingly saying that he was tickling the tail of a sleeping dragon. Like for real? This guy could have killed everyone within a radius of 10 kilometers, and they were joking about it like it was nothing. As you can guess, during one of these tests, Slothan's screwdriver slipped off and the two neutron reflectors closed upon each other, creating a nuclear bomb that was ready to explode in a few seconds. The whole room was filled with blue light caused by Cherenkov radiation, the same type of light that you can see in nuclear reactors. He died nine days later due to radiation poisoning. After these two incidents, the plutonium core was named the Demon Core as it caused two deaths in one year. The original plan for the core was to use it in nuclear tests during Operation Crossroads. But due to complications with the test site after previous detonations, it was melted in the summer of 1946 and recycled for use with other cores. And that's the end of our story. Remember kids, don't play with plutonium cores using a screwdriver. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Comments are also welcome. Stay tuned for another video. See you in the next one. Take care.